Jesus fucking Christ. Bye, guys. Well, just in case this is a cop coming by. It is a big Friday night in the end times here. I am right down the street from Bugs in a Jar Farm. I am at most one quarter mile from Bugs in a Jar Farm here on this lovely moonlit. It is a Friday night, August 5th, 2022. So my, my buddy, uh, down the street is having his big bash that he has each summer uh, big bash and there's people coming from good god a lot of this crowd is coming from uh, Connecticut but there's about 200 people here I'm guessing tonight. This party started last night. It goes until Monday morning. It goes from Thursday afternoon <laughs> till Monday morning uh, down at his farm down the street from mine. And yeah, as I say, uh, people coming from hundreds of miles from uh, mostly the northeast U.S. Uh, to get together with their young, beautiful people friends. <sighs> you know, guys, I was at this party last year, and I actually had some fun at it, as I recall. But, uh... But this year, I don't know. I came here earlier. I had to bring some of my creamed crack. Some of my famous cream corn chowder that I make. Uh, to share at the potluck dinner. So then I get here and find out that it was a catered dinner. And they were selling dinner for $10. Basically rabbit food. It was one of these vegan dinners where you buy ten dollars worth of rabbit food and uh but they were very happy to get the corn i just they just had to write that it had dairy in it that it was creamed corn and had uh and had some dairy in it uh but the hippies seemed happy we had happy hippies eating the creamed crack and uh, I declined to pay the ten dollars for the rabbit food and went back and ate a uh, a pork bacon and cheddar cheese sausage sandwich pork sausage with bacon and cheese in it there you go had to grill one of those up so uh, it's now about 10 o'clock so I decided to come back down here uh, you know guys and you know I'm, I mean I'm not you know I'm really not knocking these guys they, they really are some really nice sweet young beautiful people they really are uh, but for reasons I cannot quite understand is, I mean, I sat down and as the hour or so that I was here wore in, I mean, I could just feel this, this, this black fog of just, you know, hopeless just absolute fucking this just, just the the sheer hopelessness of the entire situation that I will ever 
uh, I, I mean that I will ever find a, a another tribe of, of real life you know I mean I love you little pieces of celluloid but you know what I'm talking about that uh, I have gotten so far out in the fucking uh, narrow end of the bell curve that I'm even beyond the other dwellers of the narrow end of the bell curve. Uh, I just... I mean, I have no clue what these what, what these kids are. I, I'm guessing, and there's a couple of guys my age, probably the parents of the people, but it's mostly, I would say, anywhere from 22, between 22 and 40, whatever that generation is. And, and these probably, as most people go, they're probably not entirely clueless fucking morons. Now, I'm expecting there's quite a few techno-utopians in there and a lot of green New Dealers. There's probably a fucking lot of electric cars over here in the parking lot. Uh, so, they're, they're not entirely fucking clueless morons, but at the same time, you know what I'm saying. It's just... You, you, you don't want to harsh their mellow. And you see these 22 to 38 year olds, you know, just acting like 22 to 38 year olds, especially the breeders. And, and there's a bunch of fucking kids here. That's another thing, is the kid energy. There's probably like 30 or 40 of these little fuckers. Uh, you know, running around doing what those little fuckers do. You know, they were making my goddamn dog nervous. I had to go take Sancho home before he bit one of those little fucking kids like he did at the time at the Christmas tree lot. But, uh, but it's just like, you know, who the fuck are these people, Hamon? You have no business here you you have no more business with this gang than you do uh, you, you know at the fucking world economic forum uh, and just uh, 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 of course the, the, you know just the absolute just 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 the just the bleakness of my social life and my sex life looking forward, and, you know, pretty much on the day I die, that I just have to get it through my fucking skull that I'm, I'm never going to have a tribe again. I, you know what I'm talking about, my real life tribe. I'm, I'm talking a group of... In like you know, like I had in somewhere between twelve and two hundred close friends, you know, pretty much where you always have like, like if there's some you know if there's some shindig like this going on, uh, you always have uh, a, a, you know some fellow tribes members to, to you know to go with. Or, uh, heaven for Finn, that you might actually have a, uh, you know, a female date. Uh, but it, it really is the, I don't know which it is. Is it the tribe, or is it the female, or is it the combination of the two? And I expect it's the combination of the two. Uh, that I'm, uh, I've got some people walking by. So, uh, I guess the man is taking a break. The man is taking a break. So, uh,
Yeah, just the the not so much the recognition as as just the the bleak admission to yourself that you're basically just going to be uh fucking alone the rest of your life. Uh You know, I've been thinking of this, uh, I wish I, I'm, I'm kind of stoned right now. I can't even remember that. Anyway, there's this new Netflix thing, and it, it's, what it is, well, I don't, I don't know what it is, but it's something on Netflix where it's this, you, you know, they have like 10 episodes, and each episode is like 15 or 20 minutes, and it's not... Vice News, but it's some outfit, you know, trying to become the new Vice News, you know, the for the young, beautiful people, like at this party, is who it is. So, I turn it on last night, just flipping through Netflix, and lo and behold, I do not fucking believe it, the universe has whispered again. I, I was totally unprepared for this. I had no fucking idea this was coming up. But this little uh, episode, they did a 20-minute op- episode on Auroville, India. And I don't even know how much that I've mentioned about Auroville. I'm not going to get in a in a big rant about it now. But But one of the things that the universe has uh, whispered to me, has put in my path as I try to figure out what the fuck I'm doing with myself in three months. See, I'm leaving Bugs in a Jar Farm in three months, and I have no fucking idea what the fuck I'm doing with my life for the next six months. I I, I don't know what state I'm going to be in. I don't know who... I'm going to be with. I don't know if I'm going to be a complete fucking hermit. I have no clue what my uh, fucking plans are for November to May. And uh, and I just don't... I, I don't even have the most elemental vision of it. I mean, you, you, you've you've got to have the vision before you have anything else. You have to get the vision to make the plan to manifest the vision. And I have no fucking vision. Uh, to, you know, to turn into a plan, but for some reason, this crazy fucking place called Auroville, India, is is looming uh, in my, somehow in my morphic field has absorbed Auroville, India, and now this thing's showing up on Netflix out of the blue last night. Uh, you know, as I've been wondering, uh, more obviously, the closer I get to November, half the fucking summer's gone, and I have been wondering a lot the last few days what the fuck I'm going to do with myself. It just like it happened, and in, 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 in for the second time, I'm, I'm voicing this question in Auroville, India has appeared twice now and it's getting harder to ignore but the problem with Auroville India you just have to go on this A-U-R-O Auroville India and see for yourself what the fuck I'm talking about but the biggest problem of all with Auroville is that it's filled with the exact kind of people who are at this party. And I am talking generally, I mean, everyone I met here was totally nice. Uh, I am talking about uh, young, 
attractive, well, m more than attractive, you know, that that's the other thing, being surrounded by this sea of these gorgeous young hippie chicks for six months. Talk about being thrown into a depression, uh, having to look at all that nubile, firm, young flesh sauntering by. I think there's some of that shit sauntering by outside this truck right now. God, the swaying, nubile, young flesh here tonight. So anyway, that Auroville is basically going to be like 5,000 of these people instead of 200 and on any given day I'm likely to run into 5,000 of them and, uh, and, 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 and it's not just going to be f for a day or two and I'm not going to have the option to get in my fucking truck and drive a quarter mile and get the fuck away from all of these very nice, intelligent, probably, I'm sure, uh, you can just assume they're educated, probably a lot of Cornell students and graduates here, you, you know, uh, it, it isn't that horrible. Uh, so I'm essentially getting a tiny sliver of a taste of, of, of what I would be dealing with in Auroville, India 50 times over with no escape. And after about one hour in the company of these uh, b beautiful, nice, intelligent uh, young people, I was ready to get the fuck out of there. And, uh, so I, so I'm coming out of the, <laughs> I'm getting in my truck and one of my neighbors pulls up alongside me, sees me getting in my truck and he goes, like, I didn't think we'd see you down here at this party. And I said, oh, you, you, you know, uh, I said, I'm checking it out, Richard, but I don't think I'm a hippie anymore. I said, I think I used to be a hippie, but obviously I have lost my interest in, in hippies. And he goes, and he's kind of stiffing like this. And it's right at, you know, at dinner time. It's, and uh, he goes, well, I don't smell no barbecue coming out of this party. And I kind of laughed. And I said, dude, you are not going to find uh, any fucking barbecue uh, at, at this little bunch of fucking granola-breathed lotus eaters. And uh, I tried to get him to... <laughs> I tried to get him out of his truck to give it 10 minutes, but... Obviously, he wanted nothing to do with it. So there's some rumor that when, so what I'm here, they said come back later, that after the, after the stage shuts down, that they're talking about doing some acoustic music picking, that there is going to be a song circle uh, going out in the back 40, so, uh, I decided to come back down here and, and see what a New York picking party sounded like. It was pretty fucking lame last year. Well, what happened last year is they shut down the stage, we get out there, and there's like four fucking pickers, and we're just getting ready to start playing, and somebody cranks up some fucking techno rave music coming off this thumping, hypnotic, you know, dumbing down music that just goes on and on and on with no beginning, middle, and end. And they started blaring that, and uh, that was the end of the acoustic picking circle. So uh, I'm giving it another try this year. And that's what got me down here to 
hopefully there will be in God there will be somebody playing fucking music. But uh, so yeah, so I'm uh, watching this thing on on Auroville, India, uh, trying to put my you know, trying to analyze whether going to Auroville, India is a good move or a bad move. And uh, so this is part of my process. So anyway, I, I watched that. Uh, so I'm watching that Netflix thing, you know, thinking about is this, it's not, well, I guess it's a purchase. I mean, it, you, it, obviously, you have to purchase the plane ticket to India, the round trip plane ticket to India. I have to figure out about the dog and then line up housing and all of that for six months. So, I mean, that's just part of it. The financial end of it isn't even my uh, my main concern. I haven't even gotten that far. But you know what I'm talking about, the, the, the purchase is uh, and so I'm thinking about that, and, and then of course one of the things I'm thinking about is uh, you know all of these gorgeous young nubile little hippie chicks on trust funds. You know the kind I'm talking about, the little uh, Greta Thunberg worshippers uh, uh, flying over to India to talk about their carbon footprint and how they're saving the planet by eating granola uh, but anybody who knows me will watch that 20 minute video and uh, take a wild guess on the latest fantasy that uh, I'm mixing in with this so there is the there, there's just just thinking how brutal it will be to be in Auroville without a woman. And then start thinking, well, do you want to show up with a woman or do you want to... I mean, if you sh if you show up with a woman, uh, you have the woman. But, but you know what I mean? But then... then you don't have one over there versus showing up without a woman and getting over there and still not having a woman. You know, watching all of these, uh, you know, beautiful young people in love, uh, you know, fucking holding hands and going out to some romantic little Indian dinner at night and, and all of that shit. And, uh, and and just watching people coming over there on their fucking honeymoon or or whatever, they're they're a little romantic fucking getaway to Auroville, and uh, I'm sitting there uh, uh, alone with my thumb up my ass. So I'm I'm kind of that's kind of the overlay of the video on living in on living in. <laughs> Auroville, and then what comes on, I guess it's, you know, this is a series, it's the same reporter from whoever this, you know, hipster news service is, and then they go from there into sex bots. They're, one of their episodes is on sex bots, and, uh, they, and I literally mean, I, I don't mean a a, a sex bot on the internet, you know, like these sex bots, you know, gumming up the comment sections. I mean genuinely full body sex dolls. Uh, and now, you, you know, they supposedly have brains, so it's the next generation of uh, sex bot. Uh, and they actually, and, and th these are available to men or women, and, and uh, so you actually buy, you, you know, you buy your robot to fuck, obviously, is the main thing, but they're actually now 
you can have conversations with, they have these AI brains inserted in them. They literally now have fucking AI brains. And I don't know if they're programmed to say romantic shit or whatever. So uh, now not only do you get, you know, the full-sized, anatomically correct, uh, you know, sex, sex doll, but now you can actually have something, something remotely related to a conversation uh, with your sex bot before you fuck it. And it's unbelievable. I, I mean, you can choose, uh, well, women obviously take a wild guess what the, you know, what the women are there choosing. Uh, and, and actually what it didn't get too much into this, but it was, it was obvious what they were saying, at least with the people they interviewed on here. And don't think women aren't buying these things, but it the men were, it sounds like the men are much more interested in purchasing these sex bots that have more than sex organs on them. That you, Follow me, the women just want the dick. Uh, it, it was, it, anyway, you can go listen to the episode where they're in, interviewing these uh, these women and you know, joking about it, but it's the men who are, uh, you know, ordering these tailor-made, you know, absolute little hotties. You know, they all look like they're, they're about uh, 19 years old. Uh, you actually get to choose your, you, you, you can make all of these choices on uh, their ass and of course their tits and their nipples and then you even have this wide selection of of labia that you get uh, different shaped you know the actual pussy lips you can special order them and then I'm sure the pubic hair it either comes in different colors different haircuts uh, you know they have all of that stuff uh, the, these anatomically correct you know they're built out of some sort of silicone don't know what the skeleton situation is like I mean I don't know if these girls if they just flop or are they somewhat, you know, can you bend them? Remember like Gumby and Pokey. Uh, if you remember, you know how you could bend Gumby? So it, it, you know, it was only a 20 minute segment. But, uh, and so these things start at $6,000. They, they start... You know what I'm talking about. I, I mean, the, you, you know, the, the kind of like the shelf models or something start at $6,000. There is no telling where it goes to. And, uh, and it says on there, I don't know why they didn't have the survey for women. And it was unclear. The question was the asking men. Uh, and, and I don't know where they got their survey sample, but how, wherever they found their sample, asking men, would you fuck a, uh, would you fuck a sex bot? And what, and, uh, I think it was 40% of surveyed men, uh, But you know it was unclear. I mean, what are they talking about? Are they talking about the... Are they talking about the... Damn, mosquitoes are getting in here. So, what I couldn't understand what they were asking is, 
would you enjoy sticking your dick in a sex bot? Uh, and 40% of men, because 60% of men are liars, 40% of men were honest enough if that were the question. But, I mean, I don't know, know exactly are they saying, asking men, would you stick your dick in a sex bot? Would you buy a sex bot? Uh, and, and or, or would you actually try to get into a relationship with a sex bot? And, and I found myself actually getting in this debate with myself. Uh, I, I mean, obviously, the, the, you know, the first question, depending on if that is the question, uh, dude... Would you enjoy sticking your dick into some uh, little haughty 19-year-old uh, sex bot down on her hands and knees with her custom-made labia uh, peeking up at you? Uh, would you enjoy sticking your dick in something like that? I think we all know the answer to that question. But I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm actually taking the debate farther than the obvious. And that's, A, would I spend $6,000? Would I spend $6,000 to buy this thing to stick my dick in? Uh, six thousand uh, dollars. I mean, I've never bought a whore in my life, but I do think six grand could at least get you a lot of lap dances. Uh, six grand, and and that's just uh, you know the bottom level, bottom shelf sex bot. We're not we're not talking the top shelf sex bot. That bitch would probably cost you, good God, fifty thousand. But you know what I'm saying. Uh, would you be willing to spend $6,000 for the opportunity to stick your dick in, in one of these little things? Uh, and, and then I, I started, uh, and of course the answer to that question is that depends on how much disposable income I have. Obviously, I am not in a financial position right now to spend uh, $6,000 on one of these sex bots. But how much money would I need in the bank right now to where it would be worth $6,000? Uh, if, if I had $100,000 sitting liquid in the bank and I could have a sex bot and $94,000 in, in, in the bank. Uh, if I had a hundred grand, then I would buy the $6,000 sex bot. And if anybody wants to start a GoFundMe for Hambone's $6,000 sex bot, I will be glad to take your GoFundMe uh, donations for my $6,000 sex bot. But above and beyond that, I actually found myself having a serious discussion with myself about would I be happy in a relationship with not so much the sex part of the bot, but the neck up part of the bot. Could I actually convince myself that I had a romantic partner that enjoyed my company, that uh, she was of a like mind, that she and I could have intelligent conversations uh, about the, the fate of the planet, uh, that she likes the same kind of music as me, that she would enjoy, you know, just long drives through the middle of nowhere with this chick 
Uh, would she like to go kayaking? I mean, I don't know how good a, a, of a kayaker a sex bot can be. And I'm, and I'm thinking, you know, it's every bit as depressing as thinking about getting in a relationship with a real human but it's not any more depressing. So, another way of saying the depression you give yourself from actually considering getting into in a relationship with a sex bot is how depressing it is thinking about your romantic prospects with members of your own species. And that's how depressing it is. And then when I added, so I added all of this sex bot depression, and that I, you know, I don't know how you get to enjoy the pleasure of sticking your dick in one of these sex bots without paying the $6,000. It's not exactly like you want to buy a used sex bot on Craigslist, you know what I'm saying, guys? You know, as soon as you drive that bitch off the lot... It's not it, that six thousand dollar sex bot. A week later is not gonna. You're not gonna be able to resell it on Craigslist for six thousand dollars. You're not gonna be able to give it away. But uh, just combining the uh, sex bot depression with the uh, Auroville depression. Then I got to be totally fucking depressed. But it sounds like the stage has shut down here. So I am going to go uh, check out to see if there's any acoustic music being played. So uh, wish me luck. Do you think I will be posting a music video or not tonight? get out there and get your sex bot and move to Auroville while you still can. Bye guys.